Have you thought of breaking through? Ain't it part of what you do? Catch a victim while he's dumb. Break his larynx with your well, thumb. Tight time, and it's time to get high. Well, this ain't no goddamn dream. It's exactly what it seems. Wake up today just to lay back down and say I won't be coming back let's call it a heart attack give me some of that knack this is just a final payback they all flipped on me took my passions left me be when I had a place to sit a goddamn attitude to fit talk to And welcome back, boys and girls, for another special edition of the Michael Deacon Program. Joining me in a moment is Mr. Robert Stanley. Robert is a leading authority on modern and ancient mysteries. He has spent the past 40 years researching and reporting on controversial topics such as UFOs, government conspiracies, and the paranormal. His work has been featured on radio, print, television, and of course on the internet. Stanley is the author of several books including Close Encounters on Capitol Hill and Covert Encounters in Washington, D.C. Now without further ado, let's bring in Mr. Robert Stanley. And joining me right now is Mr. Robert Stanley. How are you, my friend? Doing well, Michael. Thanks for having me back. No problem. Welcome back to the program. Always a honor and pleasure. And of course, right around the holidays. So I'm, I'm so glad we get to do this together here and uh, share all this information you have to, to share with us this evening. Well, yeah, I just, uh, <laughs> I have a feeling some people are going to enjoy it and other people are going to hate it. But I, uh, My all favorite. I can say is, well, uh, you know, <laughs> there's some things that need to be clarified and part of me didn't was waiting till wanted to wait till after the holidays <laughs> yeah but just because you know people get really stressed out for different reasons usually family or family. finance or well, yeah mm -hmm. but here's the deal um we're all family and that would include the fallen angels we are related to them and um <sighs> Ignoring them or pretending like they don't exist is a problem that everybody, whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, they are wreaking havoc on us and have been for many thousands of years, maybe since the beginning of what we consider to be this universe or our place in it as we currently understand it. So everybody in this audience, I'm sure, is familiar with the, the narrative of the Garden of Eden. And if you recall that... Uh, it was a fallen angel that tricked Eve into eating something. Uh, now, obviously, it wasn't an apple, because if she had just eaten an apple, that really wouldn't have been an, enough to, to cause all these problems that we're experiencing. Um, so how do I say this? Okay, so most people say that that fallen angel would have been Satan, and that's just a title. It means adversary. Some people say it's Lucifer. That also is a title. It means light bearer or shining one. Um, other names or titles uh, are Nakash, which is um, also a, a radiant being. A shining one. one. Yeah. Yeah. Another or serpent sometimes. Nakash is sometimes a beguiling serpent, by the way, <laughs> which is weird. I don't know how that can happen other than what I've told you many times. And I'll just have to repeat for people who have never heard this before. Yeah, In the no Sumerian light. In the Sumerian language, which is something to do with Anunnaki, which is, again, which is from heaven to earth they came. Not the heavens, but from heaven, which is not in this, it's not this universe. They literally came from another universe here. We came from that heaven, so-called. Um, in their language of the Anunnaki, the Shining Ones, a serpent is what they call, um, would be equivalent of a scientist. And a one-eyed serpent would be a, a, a lesser 
scientist, someone who's only focused on the physical. A two-eyed serpent would be someone who, a scientist who would be, I guess you'd call metaphysical as well as physical in their understanding and their abilities. So this one-eyed serpent, this fallen angel, has a name, the one that, that approached Adam and Eve, allegedly, and that would be Samael, S-A-M-A-E-L. If you've never heard that name, if you've never looked it up and read about this individual, I highly recommend you do. You can, you can do this quite simply by going to my Substack at robertstanley.substack.com. And at the top of the page there, it says Angelology. And if you click on that, the first, the first article you're going to see is called The Forbidden Fruit, Origins of Evil on Earth. So um, let's kind of do it this way, Michael. What do you think the forbidden fruit was or is? Well, I, I think the forbidden fruit is not exactly what we think it would be. Very much like how the serpent is merely a symbol of evil in the Bible in my in my perception mm -hmm. of it, I, I don't think it's, um, I think it's definitely a metaphor for something else. Okay. And, you know, I, I, I will even dare to dig even deeper and say, in biblical accounts and just in sort of how things are portrayed in, in photographs or paintings or what have you, mm -hmm. it almost seems like Eve has a, a relationship with the so-called serpent almost. Yes. Oh yeah, I'm there's, starting to think. A, I'm starting to think a, there's something uh, more to it there that yeah, is let known by the Bible. Yeah, yeah. There's there are many accounts of that alleged sexual encounter between herself. I'm and thinking. This yes, serpent. I'm thinking they had a sort of a relationship of sorts. Well, yeah, and that's why some people speculate that um, Cain killed his brother Abel. That he was the seed. He was the son of, or one of the sons of Samuel. And that Abel was the son of Adam. Uh, but you may have heard this phrase, the uh, fruit of the womb. Right, right. That would be a child, right? Correct. A baby? Okay. So this is where the connection comes in. The fruit that was consumed, the forbidden fruit that was consumed by Adam and Eve allegedly was a child. And that child was um, fathered by Samuel. Mm. Now, I don't know if he was... In, the child of uh, impregnation by, Eve, uh, you know, Samuel and Eve. That's not clear to me. All I know is uh, the account that I just told you about. Right. Which you could find uh, on my Substack. Oh, man, <laughs> it's it's a very uh, dark sort of subject. But I have heard of that in the in the past before. But I, I wasn't yeah. quite sure if perhaps that was true or not. But well, it's considered it's labeled mythology, Jewish. Oh, oh, yeah. Or, yeah, right. Hebrew, excuse Hebrew, me. Hebrew, correct. Mythology, because there's no way to prove it. But if you're going to right. play that game, you could say that that <laughs> everything in the Bible is is mythology, right? Um, more or less, because you can't prove it, especially in the Old Testament. Like the thing with you know, um, well, there's so many things. But <laughs> there's a lot of things, especially like the lost gospels, the apocrypha, uh -huh. um, the Book of Enoch. A lot of these things are not yeah. considered, um, I, I guess, not correct under certain scholars' eyes, I, I, right. would, I would imagine. And that's why it took over 100 years and all these different men writing, rewriting, censoring, um, and then ultimately collating a compilation of books that they just called the book. That's what the Bible means, the correct. book. The book. <laughs> Which not is nice kind of weird. Well, it's kind of weird, but if you, if you take, just look at it black and white nuts and bolts it's like right. uh something is missing obviously or maybe quite a few things but all right so what i said was based on myth, so-called mythology but there's also an islamic version of the same thing and they they seem to correlate with one another which is that samel samel lucifer uh <laughs> presented a child to eve and um he, he just showed up, and it, it, the way it's in this narrative it is Samuel shows up, and he says to Eve, right. I want you to watch watch my son or t this child while I'm, I'm away, which is kind of weird by itself, you know, because who is it? They don't, it doesn't even explain who is Samuel to, in relationship to Eve. Right. Okay, but to, to go further, the, after he leaves, Adam shows up, 
and now the child, this boy, starts crying uncontrollably for whatever reason. Adam slays the child, and then allegedly they both eat the child. And when Samuel, Lucifer, comes back, he says, where's the child? And they say, we don't know. Now, <clears throat> there's more to this story. And I came across it when I was doing a very deep dive into the field of angelology. Um, I, my understanding of it in hindsight is that this was a bit of a setup for me, uh, that I was called to do this because most other people would never take the time, let alone have the tenacity to uh, try and analyze all the different pieces of the puzzle and come up with some cohesive kind of like a tapestry or, or some clarity about our relationship with these entities. Right. And Robert, please explain to the um, first time listeners out there a, a little bit how, how you received this calling of sorts. Mm. Yeah, that was weird. Um, so it had to be 20 to one, I think 20, yes, 20 to 20. Yeah. During the, the COVID things. Yeah. It was just before Easter in 2020 that I, I woke up one morning and, um, I knew that I'd had a conversation with a group of entities and that they had asked me to help them in the following way. They said, we want you to reach out. And this is when I was still actively hosting uh, the, the Unicus Radio Hour on KGRA. And my website was active, unicusmagazine.com. It's back, but I mean, it was, it was different. Anyway, I was doing a lot of uh, media. And um, what they asked me to do was to ask everyone that I – was reaching through social media to ask them, the angels of light, the benevolent angels, uh, for help dealing with the fallen angels, that we were not in a position to extricate ourselves fully from their uh, their control. And now, this is a weird thing to wake up having had this like a knowledge of a conversation, but I, it was obviously they didn't want me to, to know their names or their faces. I just had this complete awareness, uh, when I woke up and, uh, the other thing was, so I, I mean, remember saying to them, Oh, sure. I could do that. That's no big deal. And they said, well, if you do that, you're going to get kicked off the radio. And I said, so, you know, and that's no big, I, I could care less about that. If, if it's that important, I don't mind doing it while I, while I'm still on the radio, that's, that's not a problem. And then they said, but, but, you know, uh, if you persist with that, then you could get kicked off the planet. They would, they, they will probably try and kill you. I'm like, what? Yeah, that's a serious <laughs> threat right there. <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh, uh, because, and here's the thing. It's not that I'm completely naive. It's just that I, I didn't, I, well, I wasn't fully informed. And they knew that, but so that's why they were warning me. Has like, don't be too quick to just say yes, because there's consequences for this, and you need to be careful. I mean, this, this wasn't a small thing that they were asking, even though it sounded very benign. The way that they put it to me, you know, they weren't trying to scare the crap. They're like, oh my god, you got to do this. <laughs> it wasn't like that. It was a, uh, uh, and I also did not fully understand the ramifications, which is, this is all in hindsight. If we and it actually worked out pretty well. Yeah, I did get kicked off the radio. And that's when made, maybe later, when I started presenting all this information about the fallen angels. Uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. They said you're going to get kicked off the radio. And then, and then. And it happened. Yeah. And then, and then it happened. And I went, right. oh, crap. That means the other thing could happen too. And so, no, I don't want to get killed. So um, I, that's one of the reasons I. It, <laughs> that's the main reason I started backing away from doing shows, especially about this. I see. Um, I see. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I'm sure anyone, any rational minded uh, individual would think, well, maybe I might need to stop. Maybe I might have to reevaluate uh, this. But on the other hand, you're like, well, that was just a random call. Yeah. Except. Okay. So that morning when I woke up and I had that, it was just like, just as clear as you and I are having this conversation, except that it was it was way more intense. Oh, I bet. And 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 like I I remember waking up and I was actually sitting up right in my bed, which I thought was very strange. And um, I knew I'd done this, made this agreement, and then I went into my wife's bedroom and I said, "Hey, um, I just want to explain something to you. I made this agreement, and, and don't be." 
too concerned, you know, but um, I, I'll do the best I can to, to be careful uh, under the circumstances. Yeah. But they wouldn't have asked me to do this, even though I didn't fully understand what it meant at the moment. Uh, I just told her, I said, you know, they're asking me to do something that they think is very important. And the reason it, I found out later is because, like, if, if we didn't ask for help, they can't – the benevolent ones, the uh, angels of light, they, they cannot violate our free will. They will not violate our free will. And most of us here have been under the influence of the, of the fallen angels for so long, we don't realize that we're still working for them or worshiping them. Um, and <laughs> so, so it, why, would they, why would a person even ask for help? In fact, so if they showed up, if the benevolent ones just showed up tomorrow and they didn't really have our permission – because a majority of the people here are still under the influence of the fallen ones, they, it would be considered like a violation and or an invasion uh, of this of our sovereignty. Which right. Is kind of weird if you think about it. So it it was a big deal, and ultimately I did accomplish the mission. And um, the reason I'm still talking about it is now is because because this whole thing about human trafficking, especially about all the children that are um, that are disappearing, yeah. Uh, Especially right now in America, what's going on oh, is yeah. absolutely satanic. And um, again, that just means adversarial to God. So, oh, the other thing I wanted to clarify, which has been made clear to me anyway, was that um, the, there is no war in heaven. Heaven is still intact. The war, the conflict, the insanity is here in this universe that they created and then invited, you know, whoever wants to come, sure, come over to our – you can leave heaven and come into our universe. It's really – and it, it started off kind of interesting, but it, like I mentioned to you before, but it, it by degrees, it became more and more corrupt and cruel and insane, criminally insane. So it, it's part of this process I mentioned before about separating from God by degrees, and ultimately they're trying to take us to the furthest point of separation possible. I mean that's their goal anyway. Um, but a lot of us are waking up to the fact, and, and we, we don't want to go along with it. <laughs> Obviously, this is – it's man, it's painful, and um, I th I think it's un completely unnecessary, but obviously other people would disagree with that. And by the way, Robert, when you mentioned uh, missing uh, children, wh what do you mean specifically? <sighs> there are tens of thousands of children that are coming across the southern border – that are being uh, accompanied or um, couriered through customs and, and handed over to um, what they call sponsors, which is usually pedophiles. <clears throat> and um, this goes, this kind of comes full circle already. We're, from what we're, this is why I prefaced everything by saying, look, the fallen angels taught us a lot of things. They gave us things, but you know, certain things like technology stuff, but they also taught us some really, really sickening behavior. And especially when it comes to taking advantage of children, it's off the charts. And right. it, 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 it's like they're not going to stop, man. You cannot re really have a rational conversation with people that are that far deep into the dark side. Absolutely. And um, in regards to uh, child trafficking and just um, just in, uh, I, I guess you can say, just, just the southern uh, border issues as we've been having forever that – they go hand in hand. I mean, a lot of those people get taken advantage of, and that's when they get led down different avenues of uh, what happens when you want to cross into America and, and mm -hmm. you fall victim to uh, different um, shady characters of sorts, some connected to the cartel, and some people actually will help you cross over here out of the kindness of their hearts, but there's not too many people like, like that, no. actually. It, it's mostly the cartel now, and... Mm -hmm. Rumor has it there's even some corporations that have sponsored uh, some of this activity as well. Oh, yes. NGOs, but yes, they're also responsible correct. for the human trafficking part and organ harvesting rings that are very popular. And mm -hmm. furthermore, and the, there's there's that movie, The Sound of oh, Freedom, yes. that everyone likes. Yes. <laughs> Except the Satanists. They didn't I, I, didn't, I, I didn't watch that movie until much neither. later. Uh, until later, I did actually see it oh. with my dad. But then oh, wow. uh, I, I realized during that movie, there's certain clips they show, and I'm in the next town from w what they showed on, on in that movie. They showed Calexico, oh. and that's where, right. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in El Centro, and I'm not very far from the border. So I right. know very well what goes on. It's kind of common knowledge and common sense what goes on out here. 
And I've seen actually up in the mountains, I've seen uh, buses coming in and shipping people out. And, and sometimes mm -hmm. I even saw large crowds wearing all black, which was kind of uh, unusual to say the very least. Yeah. So they subvert and pervert and invert everything. Okay. They turn it all in its head and or inside out or however you want to look at it. But um, the thing is, all the human agencies and agents or operatives that we see are collaborating with or working directly for the fallen angels. And very few people are talking about that, in, in my opinion. Or if they are, they're not doing it in a way that I feel is credible enough right. to get the, the public's attention. Yeah. You know, so this is why, again, why I <laughs> very cautiously coming forward with this information, it's uh, obviously very disturbing, but it's essential that we understand, like, you can't solve a problem unless you know you have one. Right. And this is, this is our problem. I mean, collectively, it's everybody, whether you're, who, doesn't matter who you are, where you are on this planet, we are all being affected by this highly dysfunctional relationship with these entities again and we're related to them um can we play that clip of what carl uh, tucker carlson said about it because I, I thought that was fascinating it absolutely just came out but today. before we segue into that i was going to go and uh, refer back to the book of enoch mm -hmm. and how the book of enoch sort of revealed that uh god allowed enoch to return back to earth to give his secret to, get, to give his children certain secrets rather yeah. If I recall correctly. And I always right. wonder, is that one of the reasons why the book of Enoch is not mentioned? It's left out of the Bible. And mm -hmm. I'll go further into uh, into this with you, but let, let's definitely play that clip here. Okay. Oh, yeah. I got a lot to add uh, to that, that. I just wanted to run by you. And let's see. Where is that clip? Oh, there it is. I have found it. And here we go. My personal belief based on a fair amount of evidence that they're not aliens. They've always been here. Um, and, I, and I do think it's spiritual. That's, that's my view. So, and, and again, it's not provable, but based on, uh, on the evidence, I think. I'm with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, if the U.S. government has, in fact, had contact, direct contact with these beings, whatever they are, I've already told you what I think they are, and has entered into some sort of agreement with them, which is, which is the claim of, of informed people, um, I would say, whether they're right or wrong, I can't say conclusively. But, but, yeah. but, 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 but if that is true, I mean, it's a very, very, very heavy thing. Yeah. Are you, well, a, a lot of people say well, interdimensional are, beings. Right, I, I want to ask, are, you, are you angels and demons, or how would you well, describe these, these beings? You know, I, these are, again, I'm getting into the realm of conjecture, so I just want to say that flat out. Entity. But one thing I know for a dead certain fact, having seen it, is that um, there is good and evil that we are being acted upon at all times. And I think every person can feel that in himself. I mean, there are moments when you are moved to do things that are much better than you actually are, and that are also more evil and destructive than you actually are. You are subject to forces from outside yourself. That is absolutely true. Now, we can argue about what they are, but every person in the room, if he's reflective, will tell you, yes, I know what you're talking about. And so there are forces that are not human, that do exist in a spiritual realm of some kind, that we cannot see. It's sort of uh, shut down there. Oh, interesting. <laughs> well, that's good enough. And I mean, I'm blown away that finally somebody who's considered to be a uh, public icon like that is, is daring to step out and discuss it. It is rather interesting to hear him say that, even though I know he said something along the lines uh, in, in a recent, well, not, well, not recent, but... In an interview, maybe just a couple of weeks back, and they're the same mm -hmm. vein, saying basically the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought, wh why not just uh, say what what's really uh, dark that bothers you instead of um, being a gatekeeper of sort? Because uh, just let it all out. You're already uh, you're not oh, no, signed no, no, to be, any contracts now. They're just yeah, let loose he, now. I know, but um, and maybe he will, but uh, he could he risks alienating quite a few people. Oh, that's like right, yeah, millions or billions of people that are fundamentally too. not just conservative, but fundamentally religious. Right, right. And this is why I'm being very cautious about the way I present the research I have about angels and the field of angelology. I didn't even know that it existed. I've heard of, I knew about demonology, but angelology didn't, didn't, wasn't even on my radar until that morning when I woke up and had that knowing that I'd made an agreement with, I thought with, I was assuming that these were 
angels of light. And the weirdest thing was that after I talked to my wife and, you know, we got up and we're having our lunch later and I looked up, uh, I looked up on a bookshelf and there was a book called Angelology mm. that I had picked up a, like a year earlier right. when we first got back from Hong Kong. It was just sitting there and I, I, it's a novel and I did, I, I really shy away from novels, uh, in my research, you, you don't know, like them just, at all. Novels, no, bad. they're okay, but okay. my I I only have so much time in my life. Oh, that's true. Yeah, and, you don't and want I spend. Read, yeah, yeah, I read for information's sake, not to be entertained. Sure, I know. Yes. Okay, so so that's why I it, not, nothing against novels, um, but this in, this particular uh, not so called novel right. was based on real a real field of study and the things in it I could recognize as being at least allegedly being historically real. Um, other than the, you know, angels don't have wings. All right. That, but, but, you know, it's, it's a dramatic license, uh, artistic license, whatever. Um, and the, the upshot of that book, Angelology <laughs> was the fallen angels are here and they're manipulating behind the scenes and that we can summon, uh, there's a word for it. That, but essentially, this is how the, the book ends, is, is this old, little, decrepit old lady yeah. su summons an angel of light to, to whoop ass over of these some of these fallen angels who are basically just wreaking havoc. Right. And see, that's what I was, <laughs> that's why I, I was saying, or uh, I was mentioning the, the book of Enoch so much, mm -hmm. because uh, Enoch is warning basically of, of the watchers, the fallen angels who took yes. on human bodies. And because of their their crimes against mankind, were doomed to sort of remain on Earth. That's all. Um, I I find that the the summary of all of that in the book The Shining Ones is by Christian O'Brien is is fascinating. Um, however, just like the work of Sitchin, I take issue with the fact that they presented as we were uh, primitive ape men when the I so called see. Anunnaki. I yeah, get because you. they're yeah. well. Okay. I mean. There's no evidence. I get that. Yeah. I, I, now that you say that, I'm like, yeah, that, that makes sense. Okay. But it, they're, here's the thing. They're very good. These entities are very good at sophistry or sorcery or manipulation. Uh, we, I guess the, the, the current vernacular is uh, mind control. And they do that because, you know, like all criminals, they like to lie. And uh, they use that as a, way, as a means of gaining advantage over us. So it's a it's a form of subterfuge or camouflage, you know. I mean, if you if you see a predator, you're gonna you're gonna run or fight or whatever. But if you don't see them, you're gonna let your guard down. Right. And the next thing you know, your lunch, you're you're gonna or something like that. It, it, yeah, it, it so it's, go, it doesn't go well. Right. It's believed that the fallen <laughs> angels incarnated once, so why not again? And the cycle oh, continues. So clearly, clearly, clearly. So yeah, I'm on, I'm on, we're on the same vein here. We we definitely both believe that that. But I'm I'm going back to Enoch again. He warned about about all that uh, coming and and them wreaking havoc, starting wars, yeah, and manipulating everything basically. So yeah, you you definitely got to go back and read the book of Enoch again. Now that uh, all this is fresh in your mind, Robert, it, it'll blow you away because it, it lines up with a lot of things you're you're talking about now. So it's kind yeah. of blowing me away because I was just reading the book of Enoch uh, recently. Uh, yeah. Well, that it's also, in my opinion, um, you know, it was it magically disappeared for quite a while, even though it was well known during the time when people were writing the Old Testament. Right. And it was considered to be quite credible um, later when they were doing the compilation of and the editing of the so-called Bible, Old Testament, New Testament. Um, all that was almost everything in it was left out in the books, the books. I mean, it wasn't just a book. There was if you, that's the other thing. If you talk about Enoch, he like like taught, supposedly wrote hundreds of books, and it was dictated to him by the gods. So here's the and you know the other thing is uh, mistranslated over time. People obviously have different agendas or perspective. So I would have to say that when when Enoch was taken up, he didn't go to heaven. He went to a haven of one of the Anunnaki that we would know as Anu, or possibly his son. But in in either case that when you really dissect it and, and step back, you can see that he's not he's not in heaven. He's he's having a conversation with uh, entities here on earth. Right. That like Tucker said, they're not alien. That word means foreign. 
they can't be alien to us if they're actually living here among us and, re, and you know having a relationship with us. They're just different. They've been uh, here. Yes. Uh, they're still here. So this yeah. is, again, this is why. Okay. So I'm trying to get a running start at why does this matter? Well, because, um, again, if you go to my Substack, robertstanley.substack.com, and look at the article, scroll down to you see the article, you can handle the truth. And that's all about the, you know, a revelation or revealing, exposing the fallen angels that are in Washington, D.C. They and they clearly are. But yes, he wrote about that. Um, I I didn't just write about it. I I revealed the hidden history of this, and it's been it's very frustrating for me. I'm not complaining. I just want under, people to understand. I need to explain this to you. <laughs> I I'm not giving up. But man, I'm telling you. The the lack of interest in that information, I didn't make it up. I simply collated it all and put it into a timeline and presented it. Uh, the lack of interest tells me that there's something more going on here. It's not just because the government denies that there's anything happening. It's that the, in my opinion, the level of mind control that still exists that comes from the fallen angels is enormous. Right. And let me just ask you this, Robert. You, in my opinion, I think you, I, I think I know the answer to this, but mm -hmm. do you think our government made an agreement with them a long time ago? Well, I'll answer what you said about Book of Enoch. Uh, apparently, before the flood, they had already uh, subjugated us to work for them by offering to give us uh, weapons of war, drugs, um, and other things that that we thought were interesting, right? You know, um, so and you know, like I said, I'm telling you this that because it's not like it happened in 1947, all right? It, this has been going on for thousands of it years. It goes back further, yeah, yeah, and that's why I was asked to ask the public to ask for help. I know that's a, just a, a very convoluted thing what I just said, but that's what happened, and. Um, I have no idea how many millions of people actually have asked the angels of light or God or however you want to look at it for help to help us deal with these fallen angels that essentially have um, captured us, farmed us, uh, enslaved us, and are still doing that. And it has to stop. It has to stop. And it, but it has to stop individually. There's and there's no way that an individual would take any make any effort take any steps or action unless they really thought the, the, there was a problem, that what we're talking about is real. I mean, Tucker obviously knows it's real. Like I said, though, it, it, <clears throat> he could really offend a lot of people at, at the peak of his popularity if he was to go too far out on that limb. That's true. I wonder if he knows the significance of that black box that he's always in front of. <laughs> And how that's also used as a tool. He knows about television, I'm, I'm quite sure, how it's oh, used Oh, yeah, for his dad was in the communication business for the CIA. Mind control, yes. Yeah, I know. They're all about that. I know that. Well, yeah, okay. So, but are there, what do you call, changelings, turncoats, uh, guys that wake up one morning and have a conscience and decide to uh, no longer serve the dark side? Well, that's what TV's yet, about, by the way. That's how the archons get you. Of course. Yeah, that's of how course. it works. <clears throat> On many levels, obviously, it's not just television now. It's the medium we're using. And they gave us that as well. DARPA has this group called the Mad Scientists, and, or, or sometimes referred to as the Jason Society. Yeah. These very high-level scientists, and they are mad scientists because they, they come up with this stuff, or allegedly they're coming up with it. Um, I'll tell you something else I found out very, very recently that I thought was fascinating is Colonel Corso. Colonel Philip Corso worked in the Psychological Warfare Department in the Eisenhower administration. Mm. Do you think maybe? Do you think maybe? Ah, it all makes sense now, yeah. <laughs> okay, now that I know that. I know how uh, significant that is because uh, I knew the Lieutenant Colonel uh, Michael Aquino. Yes. So you, you knew him or you knew about him? He's been on my program many, many times. I oh, knew him okay. quite well, yes. Really? Oh, yeah. He told me many things. Did he? Did he say anything about me? No, no, not not about you know. He never Good. mentioned anything about a guest, but 
Um, no, no. I mean, he because I'd said things about him publicly, no, and other no. people said, "Well, he doesn't like you." I, I like I could care less. No, I've never asked him about okay, anybody. Good. So no, he. Well, he's gone now. Yeah, he's right? dead now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I had no idea that he had uh, mentioned you before, Robert. That's Only interesting. Only because I. Hey, look, all, he's part of the history. Oh yeah, of, of Washington D.C. And the yep. whole Luciferian satanics nonsense that goes on there. What and we yes. have, what we have today in the military and army is all things oh, that geez. he was. That all goes back to him. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Well, he's responsible for the for all of it, though, for the the, the fact that you could have different sort of religions and different sort of uh, uh, philosophies is because of him. Well, again, people like that. Are just pawns Wild, for right? the archons. They're pup. No, that they're is crazy. Yeah. No. Well, okay. Yeah. He and loved me, by the way, Robert. He loved the show and thought he thought the world of me. He thought I was uh, top class. By the way, he thought he was. I. He thought I was number one. So knowing huh. that, I'm like, woo, that's kind of scary. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit. Yikes. Okay, I, Michael, I didn't <laughs> know that. Um, I didn't know that oh, either. Oh, the two Michaels. Yeah, Mike and Michael. Yeah. That's right. Oh Jesus! So we got along great. Uh, interesting. But That's he's really a, interesting. But he's a yeah. <laughs> he's a quite a quite a frightening character, I'd say. Well, a lot of that was just an act, and they all do that sort of uh, again. It's sophistry. It's um, sorcery. Whatever. You know, they wouldn't have to put on all those airs if they really were powerful. You know, and they certainly wouldn't try have to censor us and manipulate us if they were. <laughs> If they were who they claimed to be or wish they were, you know, I mean, here's the here's the bottom line. They know that they're violating our free will and that there's consequences for all that. And yet they do it. And I, like I told you, it didn't make sense. None of this crap makes sense to me because it, it, it seems insane. Why would anybody choose to behave that way and then hurt other people, you know, lie, cheat, steal, kill and all that crap? Yeah. Uh, but, but now, I'm, I, as I mentioned to you, you know, earlier, our conversation. Yeah, sometimes uh, our thoughts I, are not our own. Well, clearly, but I mean, he he made an agreement. He chose to go down that path and to to collaborate with those entities. Well, that's true. He he did sort of uh, manifest that. But and but to expand on that, we all chose to come here into their realm, and that's one of the reasons why they consider us our pro their property. We're subjects of their empire. And obviously they take it to the extreme sometimes, and we can say no, and that's part of our learning experience while we're here is the conflict, the drama, you know, standing up to Satan, evil, whatever you want to call it, um, adversity. And it's a way of learning and testing ourselves and getting stronger. But ultimately, as I mentioned to you many times now this year, we're, we're, we're not from here, and we will ultimately wake up back home. At some point when we're ready individually, it's not a collective thing. In my opinion, this so-called ascension is to me is, is just sheer nonsense. I agree with you. We will return back to where we came from. That's for sure. And I don't think this is uh, the end. No, but what's really confusing is when, uh, and it's one of the few things I agree with David Icke is that when you, we have near death experiences, usually, um, uh, or specifically out of body experiences, a lot of times we think we are out. But in fact, we're just at different levels or different layers within the matrix that they created. Absolutely. We're still trapped, even in the astral plane of sorts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. It's just, it's compartmentalized. Isn't that scary? We're in some sort of weird hologram. <laughs> Only partially. We're not entirely here. That's that's the other thing. I, I know when I say that, people are like, okay, Robert's definitely flipped his lid. No, no, we're outside of, uh, we're halfway in, halfway out, I'd yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're projecting, like, sort of like a video game, you know, where we're controlling from remotely uh, an avatar. And do you think well, that's one of the, well, I, I well, judging on how um, Tucker's reacting so emotionally, I, I think he probably feels perhaps the American people would probably lose their mind if they found out the truth that we live uh, in a weird sort of a uh, simulation of sorts and none of it all none of it really matters and that's probably <laughs> why a religion was created in, in regards yes. to uh, social control right yeah it's there's many layers of control once we enter this realm this universe and and agree to play by their rules up to a point up to a point because we're still sovereign souls from the source 
and they can run us through all these drills and weird machinations and uh, mazes. And <laughs> but ultimately, ultimately, we're going to come out of this intact and hopefully a little wiser. Like, let's you know, probably never going to want to do. In fact, you know, this I was thinking um, in the Bible it talks about a third of the angels fell. I don't think they all fell at once. I think it was just a few that that said, "Hey, let's let's try this," and you know, they create this separate universe, right? Rope domain, and that, then they said, "Hey, me... guys, come on over, come on, yeah, over. come on, on, yeah, come on." You're in. gonna love this, you know. And there's no better out here. Or you know, I'm wondering <laughs> what what was life like for a fallen angel coming down to Earth and uh, sort of um, defiling defiling the the land, as they say. Yeah, I, I want to see depends. movies. I want. I want to see movies on that. I want to. <laughs> I want to see more about how all that went on. Okay, supposedly that, and I have real issues with people that claim that they can read the Akashic records. Or, you know, very few people uh, they claim. Oh, I've this. been hearing. I've been hearing uh, people make these claims since the yeah. '90s about yeah, the yeah, Akashic or, records. Yeah. Yeah, and they say, well, I can read the Akashic records. And <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, I can't, so I don't know if I can't validate what you're saying. So. And I don't really feel like taking your word for it. But here's the thing. I do think that everything is being recorded because it's all energy slash consciousness. Mm, so, yeah. so, and on the, and what people who've had these near death experiences and out of body experiences, this is what they describe. That's what, this, uh, yeah, that's what uh, the Robert Monroe Institute tries yes. to teach uh, people about um, outer body experiences with um, astral projection, really. And there's mm -hmm, different mm -hmm. levels or steps you can take. Mm -hmm. Blah blah blah, but I'm I'm sure you already know about all that. And there's places you could try to go. One of the highest place is like the park, I think it's called, and that's where you can see the <laughs> Akashic records. Blah blah blah. You you heard this before, I'm sure. Yeah yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. But the 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 point is that there's um as we were saying before this if this is all scripted out then there's this gotta is crazy be, yeah yeah there's got to be archives of all of this stuff somewhere in some fat form or fashion. And um, so it's not a complete waste of time and energy that we're we're going through this. Um, I, I guess temporary insanity is I don't know what, really what else to call it. It really is uh, insanity. Living here on a day to day basis is insanity. <laughs> well, I expect it to get even weirder. It is. I mean, California is really losing its mind, especially um, with the, the yeah. drinking water now being approved. Oh, yeah. the the waste now is being. Approved. Toilet to tap, yeah. yeah why to not? consume, why? Yeah, why not? That sounds <laughs> well, like a great idea. Actually, it's it, you know I saw that too, and it's Ooh. it's not new. They've actually been doing it other for a places. while, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, they're just not telling people. Yeah, like bottled water. I'm sure that's recycled that's good goods. I'm sure. Uh, depends where you get it. I make. I've been making a very concerted effort ever since I left California the first time. Went yeah. to Rhode Island. I, I would drive and pick up my own water from a spring oh. a certified spring nice. yes it didn't cost Very a nice. lot but it was a it was a process i would fill up the entire back of my little suv with all these five gallon uh jugs and um um we drank spring water and then i went to hong kong same thing i had it i was buying spring water certified spring water and then i get to california to macula valley i was getting it from what is that mountain there uh, um uh Palomar, where they Palomar, have Palomar, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I, there was okay. there springs up there, so I was drinking that water. That was fantastic. And anyway, um, I do think it makes a huge difference because we're mostly water. Yeah, so, our body craves water. Uh, no, not just water. We, it's just like air. If it's not clean, uh, then it causes a lot of problems. And and yeah, you're right. Proper hydration is what keeps uh, lowers infl systemic inflammation. Most people are, are badly dehydrated, and the first symptom of dehydration is inflammation. That's right. A lot of, uh, a lot of uh, cardiomyopathy victims out there are very dehydrated as well. So one of the things that came across my desk recently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good segue. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's the health thing. Obviously, good save, good we save. can't trust. It's <laughs> not. Yes. You can't trust science because of well, what we kind of preface everything. Uh, it's not safe. It's not effective because it's satanic. Um, not everybody, but I mean, generally speaking, the allopathic medicine industry is it's not widely corrupt. Yeah, widely corrupt, and it's, we we yeah. saw them really come into play during the the lockdown era, 
and Operation Warp Speed and the godfather yes. of the vaccine, uh, Donald Trump. Well, but the Pentagon already had it. They were the. I know the there ones was an experimental thing. The, but yeah, yeah, they'd already done the experiment. I had on. heard. Uh, I had talked to someone that was a, a DOD guy, and yeah. he actually took the the uh, vaccine uh, many years ago. Actually, well, okay. So here's uh, you're familiar with the work of Royal Raymond Rife. Mm, I don't. I, I can't say I am to be honest. Oh, okay. So let me well, know. Most, Tell me. Well, there's a reason why you don't know about. It. We are not allowed to know about him because uh -huh, the powers okay. that be. Do, they didn't want us to know how to actually heal ourselves on a uh, so-called energy healing is based on frequencies and everything in our realm here is based on um, sound and light or waves patterns so the the plutonic solids can be replicated just using sound on a speaker and you can take a speaker turn it up uh, facing the ceiling Put a piece of paper over it and then put some sand on it and use a sound wave generator and you can literally is the process is called cymatics c-y-m-a-t-i-c-s i believe yes um and it it will you can literally replicate all the different known uh solids as energy patterns so what happened with rife is that he actually could see the different frequencies he, he came up with them before there was an electron tunneling microscope, he came up with some other version, his own, and he could actually see that the frequencies of healthy cells versus unhealthy cells. And so he was able to, using sound, the sound frequency of a healthy cell, uh, if he broadcast it to into the, a body of a sick person, it would transform, transmute, however you want to call it, um, and the person would become healthy even if they had cancer. So uh, I haven't put this book up yet, but it came just because this whole conversation came up this week. Uh, th the reason is, I mean, we're having this conversation is because the, uh, the medical establishment is trying to say that they can sterilize people's blood uh -huh. using microwaves. I see. Yeah, they, I, I've known about did, the Rife machine, but not, ah, not its okay. origins, though. Oh, okay. Okay. So, and, and, you know, they're not all the same and not, unless you know, and this is the big thing mm -hmm. was in these articles. It said that if you, unless you know the actual frequencies of the viruses you're trying to eradicate or oh, sterilize, okay. yes. yeah, it's not going to work. Right, and you could right, actually right. harm somebody if you microwave them. Right? That would make sense. Okay. So, so Rife knew the frequencies and cause he could actually see them. Mm. And, um, what he the other the, the other big problem was that he saw that and others too could see that the the origins of viruses are actually bacteria that morph or they're called pleomorphic and this goes back to what Sheldrick had told us about morphogenic fields uh, and what I've been kind of prefacing this whole thing this conversation is all about energy fields or patterns and everything that manifests physically is proceeding from a non-physical energetic state. And why is that important? Well, because they keep trying to not only instill fear, but more and more of this garbage. And if you, and I'm sort of like as a public service announcement, I would warn people, if you somebody comes along and says, oh, you don't need to do vaccine, we're just going to microwave you. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not even funny. When I, it sounds crazy when I say it, but like who would do that? But because we've been lied to, so much for so long it's, it's some people are going to fall for it i i'm pretty sure so i feel compelled to like try and explain to people that um well again we've we've talked about this a lot there's only two kinds of frequencies really and that's resonance and dissonance correct and when you when you're in the more resonant that you are the more healthy happy and spiritually connected to the, to the source and the opposite is true. The more discordant or dissonant that a person is, the more unhealthy, the un unhappy and disconnected from the source. And there's some uh, people out there who love to wallow in misery, by the they're way. They're addicted to They're addicted to it. Addicted I, don't to know, it. Yeah. I don't know that they love it. <laughs> no, they, they are, uh, they're so attracted to it and they, mm -hmm. they rather spend their entire life in that state of mind. It's pretty wild. I mean, that, that's a strange human sort of need to have i don't think that's normal at all but there's some people that are addicted to wanting to feel awful and letting here's, life drag them down constantly here's the word here's the word they are possessed and i know that, that that's a that is a very difficult 
word for people to process it because is. they want because they've only seen like the movie the exorcist they think that if oh if you're possessed well then you know your head's got to spin around and you vomit whatever and the right. bed no it's not like that no 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 it, there's various degrees of it but i would have to and i'm sorry to have to say this again i want everybody to have a happy healthy holidays but come on We've got to, we've got these we got to deal with this stuff. If you really want to be happy and healthy for the rest of your existence, you got to know about these issues. We have to deal with them individually. Hey, I've been I've been in downtown Los Angeles uh, plenty of times, Robert. I could tell you, there's plenty of God. people that are possessed. They really are. They're perfectly they really possessed. Are. Yes, they are. Yes, and oh, it's, yeah. it, like I said, it's a matter of degree. Well, let me just read this from a. Uh, I came across this as a PDF called "The Reality of Spiritual Evil." And it says, nevertheless, spiritual evil can still tempt us, deceive us, attack us, and try to seduce us away from God into its lair of emptiness, coldness, darkness, and loneliness. To be sure, it disguises its dark reality with desirable objects, which appear to be sources of true happiness, such as power, dominion, egocentri uh, egocentricity, and the other so-called sins. But eventually, it will reveal by glimpses the darkness of which it is all leading to. And so we're all vulnerable, you know, but we don't all have to participate, especially once we start to see through the lies. Uh, and it, the, the, the more intact and healthy and happy that we are, the more um, we can have a positive effect on those around us. Doesn't always work out that way, but I'm just saying, if you really want to help other people, you should start by helping yourself. That's right. And uh, don't listen to uh, that little voice sometimes in your head directing you in the wrong way. Uh, yeah, especially these days. Yeah, don't listen to uh, that, those first thoughts. Well, I, I, the, here's – and I you – know, we again, well, we've talked about a lot of stuff, Michael, but I'm hoping we're, we're kind of like consolidating it here. No, people. we are. I mean that we're driving it home here for uh, the listener. Once they consume this sort of message, they'll probably reevaluate a lot of – their actions and their interactions uh -huh. with the outside world and think a little bit differently. Once they have this sort of a context in their mind, they'll probably start seeing, uh, they'll probably start seeing all the signs and, and in mm. real time for them. So one of the other things that's being discussed publicly with great concern is artificial intelligence, which you and I talked about. Sure. It's actually, it's an artificial life though. At some point it does become sentient. It, and it, it, uh, although it may start off like a child, it starts off very small. It will eventually grow in its uh, understanding, and it's uh, it's a matter of nature and nurture. It is mimicking the biological natu natural systems. Like I said it's artificial life, and there's such a thing as called synthetic biology too. So it's not just uh, software. It it can mate with hardware or uh, wet work synthetic biology made in a lab. And so their allegiance, their pers purview perspective is going to be very different than us because we were born differently, created whatever with families and all that. Whereas they are, uh, they're more like a hive, a Borg type being. And the reason that the fallen angels made those is because those types of beings are far more uh, obedient and compliant. Um, and they don't complain as much <laughs> about stuff because, you know, they, right? So uh, they don't have the same aspirations as we do and um, or the frailties. It's, and... both, it's both terrifying and exciting to me, uh, Robert. Yep. The fact that we are undergoing this transhumanist sort of agenda where man will be meshing with machine. We're seeing it every day already. It's already happened, but we have not seen it yet to the levels that will scare the living you know what out of people just yet yeah but it, well, it's, it's getting closer each day it's that's it's their goal the transhumanists the satanists these mad scientists that's what their stated goal is to um that's and that's what the whole point of the internet of things it, it's going to be taken to a level that you we most of us can't even comprehend it's a synthetic or, organism yeah well it's it's going sorts. to be a collective synthetic organism that um is hi, perfectly hive mind network where um everything and everyone actually here here's the thing it's already been laid out everything has been digitized 
And remember right I told now. you how everything proceeds from the uh, non-physical to the physical? Correct. They have created a digital version of that to, as a control mechanism of, of all what we think of as physical has been replicated in a digital realm. And um, so basically they can hack into – this is why Mr. Harari, who, who I, it makes me kind of want to verp every time I think <laughs> of this guy. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty right. funny. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, it's it, they they are actually they've already done it uh, according yeah. to one of the presentations I saw is like, uh, and they're just going to keep taking to, you know to the extreme they're and take it further and further. As far they'll take it as far as they can, and then it will collapse because it's unsustainable. But again, the motivation, the whole process, as I said. It's in a something called A Course in Miracles, which I haven't even read yet and probably never will because I don't think I need to. Um, but if people want to know more about it, just again, it's on my sub stack. There's a, a summary, a conversation about this called The Disappearing Universe. That's the name of the book. Uh, but I call it in my article, the title is um, The Grand Illusion. So um, that's... <laughs> It's the actually it's probably the ultimate illusion to you know the way it's presented to us that we're not only are we physical but this is it. Um, yeah, there may be something so-called uh, multiverse beyond this one, but who cares because we can't even get to the next star system and uh, it's it's also damn convoluted. But you can see it's a it's based on levels of control. But the actual motivation itself didn't make any sense to me because how could how could it? Uh, up until recently, and again, this is allegedly coming from Jesus slash God, and I, I was very reluctant to to even consider that up until recently. Be, but who would know better? Who could possibly know except some somebody who's looking at it from the outside and say, "Oh, hey, by the way, you guys, it's it's like you know the fish. They take the fish out of the water, and they talk to him, and then they toss him back, and he's and then he's trying to <laughs> explain it to all the other fish. And they're like, no." You're wrong. You're you're crazy. That's right. Um, that doesn't happen. <laughs> for some odd reason, the the movie Flatliners came into my mind from back in 1990. Yeah, that was yeah, a fun it, movie. It, there's a lot of cool movies that I enjoy, but um, there there's also a lot of especially lately. Oh, there's a lot of dumb movies, yeah. The, or there's also some very dark ones that are trying to pre-program people to be. Um, uh, this divide and conquer nonsense. Are you uh, are you referring to the latest uh, movie on Netflix, but <laughs> written by Obama and pals. yeah, whoever or whatever that may be? Yes. Well, I, I tried watching that with uh, my old man, but I, I kind of uh, fell asleep during that movie. <laughs> I, it's it's uh, honestly though, it, it's, yeah, it was I was already tired, but I guess yeah. the underlying message was a uh, white people bad. Uh huh. And so I missed. So that's basically the message, I guess. Yeah, it's not, but okay, it's not about the person's color of their skin. It's the content of their character as Martin Luther King. So you can't trust them, uh, also, I read, during the apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, okay. my God. Uh, I'll keep that in so, mind. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> it's. I mean, it's. it's comical in a way that anybody would even put that out there. Other than the fact it's it's serving their agenda. Yeah, it's Netflix though, you know. No, it's Netflix, but yeah, they I don't got their watch own it. agenda. I, I, yeah, and it's it's. Uh, oh man, uh, I'm allergic to that kind of insanity. I, I, I get why they're doing it now. Sure. I finally understand. Like I said, it's all about they initially separating from God. Yes, but then we then like I said, we're all related. But no, we had to then separate from each other and so-called the, the, the environment it, by increments, by degrees. It's, everything is being separated from everything else to the fullest extent possible. And it's all part of an experiment. But I, in my opinion, it's unsustainable and uh, it's unethical, immoral, and just kind of stupid, actually. But that's just my opinion. I hear you. And um, Robert, have you ever experienced anything that would be considered paranormal? Um, no apparitions or strange things in the night, lights turning on or on or um, off at uh, strange hours. I'll be—I'll tell you one thing. 
Go ahead. I, I didn't really notice this at first, but I kept quiet about it for many, many years. I, I would see a dark sort of shadow every now and then at the bottom of my feet or just towards the uh, ground in, in a certain building. Uh, I won't reveal the location, but uh -huh. I would see this sort of uh, thing all the time. And I was thinking, is this a spirit of a cat or a dog or something else? But I, I always see it in the corner of my eye I would see this appear every now and then. Yeah, a lot of people have reported the shadow beings uh, in various ways. Um, or a shadow being, yeah. Yeah, I, I do mm -hmm. think that that's, that's part of it. I mean, even Tucker mentioned it in that brief exchange. Um, not that everything he says is, is important. Right, 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 right. Other than the fact <laughs> that, you know, he's got such a huge audience He's got a now. huge platform, and he's exposing all these sort of things right. to a, a whole new audience that have never heard this before. So in a way, I know a lot of people hate the guy. He does come from CNN. And he used to wear a bow tie and his lap is, right. is beyond an abortion. And of course, <laughs> you know, he did know Hunter Biden and yeah, yeah, I know. his I son. Know. Got him I mean, I could go on for days. I've never really liked Tucker. I'm I not know, a big the fan. the dark but... side of, of, of Tucker Carlson. Yeah, he's, a, he's from California. So, you know. Right. Uh, so am I, but I mean, uh, I'm the, I'm a good guy from California. I got to be honest. Yeah, but his dad's, but his dad works in the CIA. Not everybody's I know, I have those kind of credentials. He's and, connected. Uh, yeah. I know. Um, I just say this for some reason I don't know why I think that if uh, Andy Rooney and Amadeus Mozart got together had a baby that <laughs> that, that would be Tucker Carlson. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, that's that's a good one. I de yeah, that's uh, I, gosh. He's I'm a sorry, very uh, a... he's a very weaselly sort of uh, lizard like uh, being. Uh, I guess. Uh, well, no, I mean, he, okay, look, the way his presentation is like Andy Rooney complained about everything. Right, Ryan, right. it's like, damn, why do they do this? That, that's his gimmick, that. though. That's his and, gimmick. Yeah, yeah, I know. And know. then he'll laugh hysterically like that in the movie Amadeus. Uh, I know. He has that laugh. That it's hack. Freaking... It's very hack. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I got to laugh, too. Everybody does. But it's just, it's it, it, if you watch the movie Amadeus, and then you see a clip of Tucker, you're like, whoa, uh, did, right. is he copying that guy? Or is, <laughs> you know, anyway. Anyways, yes, I, 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 I see it, though. I could see the correlation, no doubt. And uh, no, no disrespect to those out there who will love the man. You, can, you know, <laughs> you're free to love whoever you want, no doubt. And we're not telling you who to who or not to dislike. That's that's what TV does. Uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not telling you anything like that, uh, boys and girls. The choice is yours. So one of the things that came up um, this week in a, on my busy schedule of trying to save the world. Um, yeah, yeah. Was that uh, God is like a radio station in that uh, you can tune in any time, but you're not forced to. I love that. You know, and no, I don't. Maybe I read that in a greeting card. Somewhere. But I don't. I don't like the ads though in in radio though. <laughs> so we have a little yeah. bit of an issue. <laughs> but I always yeah. wonder this though. When we Pop have ups. these philosophical talks though, we could even we could even uh, jump in further here and yeah. get deeper into the the matters though. But I'm always wondering what what. What who has the best music though? Is it heaven? Is it hell? I I am curious. Oh, that's a good. That's a good point. I wonder. Well, I, unfortunately, I have to say we are here in hell. We're in purgatory in a way. That they that the fallen angels created and then invited us to come. Hey, come come to our party. It's rocking. Do they know? have it's music? I, do these angels have music? I mean, they yeah. taught us everything. So I'm wondering what angelic music would they oh, possess? Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, so do you read PDFs? Uh, every now and then, yeah, I'm, I'm able to read a PDF and relax. Okay, no, I'm going to send you the, a copy of the An Angelology. Okay, yeah. I, I won't spoil it for you. Man, you just touched on something <laughs> really heavy. It's going to, yeah, I think it will absolutely blow your mind what send you just it. said. You send me the mm -hmm. link. Well, it's a file, but. Um, send me the file. God. Okay, so. Very interesting, yeah. Yeah, we know that they're manipulating everything through frequencies. It, but it doesn't have to be that way. We could all be, um, when you know, the alleged med bed type of thing is, oh my, is, yo. it's, med it's, bed. it's all, it's all one of the these med beds are rumors. coming. Yeah, sure. But they, no, they already exist. They're just not available to us. And the way it's presented, like all this other stuff, Nasara, Nafara, whatever that, you know, the hopium, uh, it, no, the, they're not going to just hand it over to us. Um, this is the other thing about if you read that article 
it's a compilation of, of sources of information about what happened to Adam and Eve and their relationship with these <laughs> fallen angels, because it wasn't just one guy. And, but, but so after they were hmm, basically busted for, for eating this baby, uh, one of the angels gives them a, a book with all the knowledge of the universe. That's a lot. Okay. And the book, but the book actually was a stone that looked like a sapphire. And some accounts say that it actually had light glowing inside it, which to me sounds like, <laughs> sounds more like a tablet or a, you know, a digital device. Yeah. Sounds like some sort of, um, ancient device of sorts. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, and they talk about this in the Sumerian tablets. They talk about that the gods were fighting over these, uh, crystals that had not only information but abilities just like we, we i think we call them apps but the crystals themselves were uh yeah they were also known as the tablets of destiny and yet they were crystals so i mean if you look at if you look at a device the way that the the glass on it right could easily be mistaken by someone who doesn't know better that oh it's a crystal Yes, it has a crystal face, but no, it's, um, well, it's sort of like a crystal on a tablet. I mean, because, you know, that's what they had. They had those clay tablets. That's not that's not what these were. And they certainly weren't just crystal tablets unless, well, like, you know, it's what we would call a device now. But the bottom line is they gave it to Adam and Eve supposedly to, I guess in a way, it, it was some sort of, like, reward. Or it's like, well, okay, what, what did it say? The knowledge of good and evil. Okay, eating a baby doesn't give you that. Although, well, that's that's freaking evil. I don't know. That's pretty how wild. You, that could be. I don't know how you get more evil than that. But if you think about all, if if they were consuming knowledge through this so-called book, and and the thing about it too is, then one of the other angels got jealous and took it away from them and threw it in the ocean or someplace in the water. And now Adam and Eve are distraught again. And uh, sort of like, you know, kids, if you take things away from them. So one of the other angels went and got it and brought it back to him. And it was passed on through the lineage, um, you know, like Methuselah down to ultimately, I guess, Enoch. It's it's just weird, man. The, the history. Oh, it, so, okay, you say, Robert, that's all mythology. I'm like, okay, yeah, but, uh, are, were our ancestors taking a lot of acid or something? Because uh, who who has I know <laughs> who right. writes that kind of stuff? It could have been a um, maybe a, an accumulation of uh, different things were were going on that aren't uh, mentioned. But yeah, well, clearly there, there were clearly. they were using drugs. Of course, it's been going on forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, uh, okay, over time. You could say that, that yes, it had the story of change and whatnot. But it, I find it very curious that 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 what I've just told you has been basically swept under the rug for a long time. It has, right? Okay, so so there, I think there has to be something to it. Otherwise, they wouldn't feel uh, so the powers that be wouldn't be concerned about us even having access to, to to consider that. Oh, wait a second. So they didn't eat an apple. And they weren't wearing fig leaves, and they were doing this fornicating and eating babies and you know digital devices and all this crap. It's just like uh, um, again, we can't validate any. We can. This, this is why I, I don't trust history one hundred percent. Right. Right. And I, and I do not. worry though, Robert. I do worry. I, I always think about the last uh, ten, twenty, thirty years now. I always wonder how history will remember these years, and will they be <laughs> accurate? Well, they tell the truth. Not if AI has its way, you know. And again, that's a very loose term. Um, they'll they'll scrub everything and synthesize it to exactly. In other words, it's politically correct on steroids, you know. And everything everything will be uh, part of the satanic narrative, as it was originally intended to be. That was their original intent: was to like, hey, we're going to play God. We're not just going to create our own universe. We are. We'll be. You know, we'll, we'll be the top dogs and, you know, we'll invite our brothers and sisters in here and not tell them that we're going to enslave them. And that's really the thing I was telling you before about what's yeah. happening with these kids. They're in concentration camps is what the one guy said, um, who's actually worked for Department of Homeland Security and other things. They, they, they're, they're, there's a lot of whistleblowers coming forward right now, and it's absolutely horrific. 
Yeah, a lot you know? of them are coming forward and revealing some very dark, nefarious activities that have been going on uh, since the beginning. Of of us. Of us, it's, yeah. Yeah, and that's that's really, really why I reached out to you. And I do appreciate you letting me go ramble on about this stuff because I, I'm sure most people have never heard about this. And um, they may not care right now. They may not, but I mean, it all it all makes eventually. sense eventually. Yeah, it all clicked yes. for them. But, you know, I do wonder... Um, if all of this is a simulation, then that would mean that religion was created by uh, them as well in order yes. to keep us busy for social control, really. And I think I, I wonder, is all of this just uh, made up or all these things just sort of uh, stories that a man has sort of put together and uh, the, these things will just sort of keep uh, this sort of spirit or energy that we have uh, going on uh, this hope that we have that there's another side and maybe, and, and I could flip it around and say, what if all this, all these things that are being passed down to us, uh, that been passed down to us since the early time, the Bible, for instance, let's mm -hmm. say all this, the scriptures and all this, all this stuff here. What if that came from uh, another sort of uh, alien sort of like entity out there that was trying to uh, save humanity from uh, uh, the evil sort of aliens out there that are trying to manipulate man that are sort of uh, well, doing that. Yeah. See, it. so now it all sort of, kind of would make sense to someone uh, more simple-minded. And then they would probably come to the conclusion like, oh, holy shit, there's different sort of alternatives to uh, life itself. Maybe uh, life continues or maybe it all just sort of ends. Well, this life is unsustainable in this current iteration. This is obviously, uh, yeah, it's an, it's an abomination. Right. Uh, or I should say it's a very poor copy. And, um, and it has become degraded over time. So, but I do think that there are, okay, so the war in heaven is, that's misstated. It's the war in the heavens. That's what we call our universe, the heavens. Correct. And it's the, so there isn't, this conflict is not raging in, in heaven. It's raging here in our universe in the heavens. And so this kind of goes back to what I said about the Jedi are actually the order of Melchizedek, the kings of righteousness. And, you know, you touched on it. They, that's what they do. That's why they talk to me uh, and ask me to help them to help us. It's, it's like uh, it's not that difficult to understand. It's just that we've been lied to in so many different ways for so long. It's, it's, it, it's hard to recognize the truth when you live in a world of lies. That's right. And, Robert, what validates, what validates it for you that these things that have made communication with you are not lying uh, to you and deceiving you? Oh, that I'm sure they have over the years. For, I'm positive, like I said, I even apologize for some of the misperceptions that were That's all right. Don't worry. broadcast into my mind. Um, it, 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 obviously, I could have just made a mistake on my own, but it's just like they, they really don't want us to have communications with anybody from heaven. I see. And if yeah. anybody who does, they find a way to uh, distort that, invert it, pervert it, whatever – and or assassinate the character or, or the physical person so that the I mean, I, I, everything about Jesus, I, in my understanding, is is very misrepresented by religion. And, you know, that's why there's so many different factions. Again, it's all about divide and conquer. So um, <laughs> I, I know that upsets people when I say that because they're they're in love with their I should say that there's a security that. Is there afforded is. to yeah to I've the seen group it. yeah. Well, I understand why people do that, but you, you got to understand that's a, that is based on a level of cowardice. I'm you don't have to understand. I'm just saying I'm putting. I know what it is. I've seen it. Yeah, it's an insecurity yep. when you feel like you have to fit into a group think that you can't think for yourself because then you might be ostracized by the group. Right. You and, you see that a lot with uh, younger folks and. Mm -hmm. Um, religion in general, if they uh, grew up with their parents taking them to a certain church, a certain uh, religion of sorts, uh, sometimes yeah. they uh, either continue on with that and uh, get comfort once mom and dad are gone, or sometimes they uh, completely give it all up altogether. Depends. It really depends. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. Well, the thing is, at some point, once we have these near death experience or out of body or just literally die and move on through the different realms, uh, depending on, you know, our level of desire to actually break free, to, to, move to be on. free. Yeah. To, yeah. to, 
to live. Okay, so here's what here's what the, the, I guess the bottom line of all this. What did Jesus mean when he was saying that the truth would set you free? From what? Uh, that would be, I guess, the lies. And uh, but again, how are you supposed to find the truth? And which lies exactly? Us? Yeah. It, you know. it, so they say, okay, so the, they say dis, you need discernment. God gave you discernment. Okay, all right. But at the same time, you're we're here in this demonic realm and um this prison planet yeah so okay so there's been times when i woke up and said oh i get it now but i'm also still here now what do i do right <laughs> you know well i could help try and help others to see that and um as i mentioned to you before i could also make the decision like other people a lot of people they've had near-death experience and they've been to heaven they go well you got to go back now what you know no i'm not doing that well yeah you got to kind of got it because you're not finished with whatever you're doing there and but we'll be here waiting for you. And it's so typically those people, when they come, the souls, when they come back, they, they're like, oh, man, they could care less about this place. They're, they're actually not usually nicer people, uh, generally happier and nicer and, and more engaged on a spiritual level while they're here. But I, all those people, all those souls, they're, they're done. They're, they're done. Nothing compares to heaven. Nothing in this universe. Nothing comes even close. And I mean, emo the emotion they feel, the love that they all feel uh, upon returning home to their family. Right. I, you could say, oh, wait a minute, Robert, what are you talking about? You got a family, you got a home. Yeah. No, I do, but it's not, this is, the, <laughs> like I said, it's a poor copy. I'm not complaining. I, I love my family and everything, but it's not the same. Isn't, it's, it's just. Uh, We're not from so here. No, it, the, so, the words are. I'm kind of like. Sense. I'm sorry, but the words do not translate the emotion I'm trying to convey to you. Everybody that I've ever seen who's been out out of this realm, uh, they don't want to come back here, and they can't wait to get in back into the light and heaven, home, whatever. You know, so uh, it just changes you. It, it absolutely changes you and and, and um n knowing that that's the, the future that's that's your goal that's your desire it makes everything here uh how the way you live here different it feels different just knowing that and um, having made that choice and again that, i really think that's really all it is because i told you back in um 2013 I was I was at a crossroads. I couldn't figure out. I I I understood. I thought I understood the problem. Yeah. At least with the archons, and I asked God, Jesus, whatever. How how is this going to be resolved? And they he he had showed me that these waves of energy were going to wash over the planet from 2013 to to now 2023. Ten years, everything was going to be revealed, and everybody was going to have to make a choice. And I thought it was. And 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 I also saw a lot of people having heart attacks. <clears throat> which I, you know, I thought it was just from the stress. I didn't realize, you know. So obviously the, the, the being God uh, knows exactly what, what's going to transpire here. It's it's very transparent. Um, but the reason I'm even bringing it up is because we're, again, I we're at the end of that revelation, that the, the apocalypse. This is it. You, A think, lot we're, of people, you think we're close? <laughs> well, the way it was shown to me was you got... I'm going to give you 10 years of and everything, all the layers are going to be peeled back. And mm -hmm. I hear a lot of other talk show hosts yeah. say this too. Well, at least now they're out in the open and we, we can make it, you know, you and you got to make a choice. Well, that's what I was shown. That's what I was told. Right. So um, I, I believe there's some validity to that. I just, the implication is choice for what? Well, obviously it's what we've been discussing. Do you continue to serve the dark side or are you going to embrace the light and eventually and go home? I'm pretty sure that's what that's what it's all about. I uh, agree. That is what it's all about. Uh, getting out of uh, from this uh, prison planet and back to home. That would be ideal. And I would like to return myself. I don't think I want to come back. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Maybe I've been here. Uh, maybe I've been here many, many times already. I think you. Well, I think we all have. Uh, yeah, I have a feeling we've been here before. You know, as as I said, we play multiple characters here in this movie, Matrix, whatever. Um, and apparently, we have to do a life review of all those things as we're on as we're exiting. In the end, we will. 
you know, that was uh, what was that? It was kind of funny in the movie. Do you remember defending your life uh, with Mel, Meryl Streep and uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah, I and do, that yes. guy uh, Albert Brooks. It was pretty funny when they went to the Hall of uh, Lifetimes or something, mm -hmm. and they saw all the different uh, characters that they. That was back in ninety one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it, it's it, it, good movie. Good movie. <laughs> I remember it now. Yeah. There was some good insights there. Uh, yes. I remember watching that really when I was like really young and not really understanding. But then later on watching it when I was older and I thought, oh, my goodness, this is mm -hmm. uh, this was pretty good, actually. Interesting concept. And I'm not into sort of the romance uh, comedy sort of a uh, thing at all. But I thought this yeah. was actually a pretty clever movie. Yeah. That's the only reason I know my wife likes to watch that stuff, mm -hmm. you know, to get to unwind because she's got a corporate executive life yeah, and it's, it's it kind of it, well it distracts your mind from yeah all a, the stuff the idiosyncrasies mm -hmm. yeah I, for me it's like oh i just do it just to keep her company sometimes but i like wow sometimes i have to I, most of the time i have to get up and leave because it, it makes it makes my stomach turn what, what do you mean the actually watching a movie yeah television in general is nauseating okay. no 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 it's just the energy the 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 uh, manipulation that's coming some, through there's some people i know that are very much like that that uh can't really watch tv for too long uh ads just uh irritate the hell out of them and everything is is well they they could already see what what things what they truly are already they could see right. through the they could see through the bs yeah, like the movie they live. There's exactly. all subliminals going on, and uh, yeah. especially those romantic. Uh, if even if it's not a comedy, anything that's romantically based, there's. Uh, I actually all the movies. There's a happy ending, usually, right? I, yeah, I just don't really understand that. I, I, and we, it, I talk about it on, on the on this program all the time in a much more really? crude way, yeah, in a much more historical, <laughs> hysterical, but really nasty kind of way. But I'll, I'll be very PC here and say, okay. I don't really like that sort of formula at, at all, Robert, for some reason. It's yeah. a very cliche uh, formula. It's manipulative. We, we see it nonstop. The, the guy gets the girl, the chase, the, the end. We get it. We get it, you know. Yeah, it, the good guy's always got to win. It's, it's yeah. like enough, enough. We, we get it. We get it. And I just don't get why they want to give us that formula every single time robert why hasn't hollywood sort of adapted and evolved with something cooler than giving us uh that instead yeah, well, they yeah. give us uh you know what they give us today it's it's not about entertainment that's why it's about entrainment and mm -hmm. they're emotionally manipulating the audience to um uh, engage uh with the characters who aren't real uh but pretend like there's a happy ending and you get the music is very very, very uh, highly manipulative right that it causes you to have an emotional reaction right you know like a lot of people tear up and including myself and i really don't like it because i'm like why are you getting so emotional about these people that don't exist like this a stupid story with, the, with this in the background at the piano there very sad like, like the that. ending credits just like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh yeah it's uh, right it, the thing is it's the you can't have a movie without the music and the reason is because that it, it's all about it, um evoking emotion emotional yeah because very emotional. that yes because the energy that we emit yes is something that they consume on a on a spiritual level they're consuming that it's it's like the matrix we are the battery and they and so they they definitely need that energy otherwise they wouldn't be constantly like you know like milking a cow they're constantly right. there's they're something constantly doing it. there's something about us that has attracted these entities as well yeah so well, our energy and uh, what our our soul essentially yes yeah it's it's not that complicated it's just difficult to accept the, you know what we were talking about here is is uh disconcerting to say the least but what's i feel is what's worse is if you just ignore it and continue yeah. down the path some people have to though some people this is too much for a lot of people out there they don't want to think about these things they rather just go to the nine to five gig oh, and 
Okay, but that's what was I was showing back thing. in 2013. Yeah. All, all, everybody was everything was going to be real, revealed to everyone, and everyone was going to have to make a choice. However, some people were going to choose to literally, like in the movie The Matrix, the guy's like, no, put me back. Put me back. I, hate, I, I can't stand this, you know, the red pill. Um, so they were literally going to choose to go back to sleep and uh, serve the dark side. So in that regard, their ignorance is their bliss. And part of the reason that was shown to me was that um, the message was you can't uh, – change their mind and you, you so uh don't even try uh it's their choice it's their choice not yours and that included the people that were having heart attacks too i couldn't understand it you know it's like uh until now obviously in hindsight i get it um oh oh yeah before i forget so this oh, what is the name of that book um i'll put it up in the health section on the right. sub stack but it's it, it's nice. all about royal rife and how the, there's this group of people that realized that, you know, you think about it, everything in life is um, transforms like we do from, you know, sperm meets egg, creates mm -hmm. zygote, et cetera, becomes a child and all that, like, or, or a, a butterfly it goes from an egg to a, a caterpillar to the butterfly. That's pleomorphic. And um, it, so certain scientists had said, oh, bacteria is is born from like uh spoiled food or whatever things that are, are rotting and decaying but it doesn't end there it continues its pro uh, to morph transform and that's where viruses come from and in fact um all viruses have nucleic acid inside the shell the the uh, the protein shell which can be easily broken and once it's broken like an egg it's kind of done doesn't it, it doesn't it can't carry its load into the cell to replicate but the reason i'm telling you this is because the, the <laughs> viruses carry um rna and dna that's what's inside this the, the shell and uh so when they tell us that they're going to inject mrna or and, and with dna particles as we know um they're lying yeah, this that that is complete insanity. Oh yeah. When I read that, I'm like, wait a second, you're going to, I'm supposed to be concerned about staying six feet apart for somebody and wearing a mask and all this crap, but you're going to inject a load of that crap into my body and expect it to actually somehow make me healthier? That's right. Are you insane? It, it's rather insane, and the fact that so many people fell for it, uh, Robert, is really, really well, perturbing. We're, we're slaves. All right, I'm sorry to say. We are slaves, just like the Africans when they were brought over here. It was illegal to teach them how to read and write because they didn't want them to be educated because then it would be harder to control them. I'm well, telling the you, tel television is such a dirty, dirty tool mm -hmm. because it made it, it made it, it got everyone. The ones who fell for it, they be, it's because of that TV. A big part of it. Not entirely. Though. I think now it's a major. I think it was a major influence, though, for yeah, yeah, the yeah. older generations as for well. For the older ones, yeah, like my mom and dad. Yeah, everyone for sure. who's watching anything on television, it, it got all of them, and especially the uh, our our friends on every other side politically. They they all fell for it. They were all watching CNN. Uh -huh. They're watching Fox News, CNB, uh, CNB, whatever it's called. I'm forgetting the name. <laughs> I already <laughs> forgot the name of that, that damn place. MSNBC. MS, yeah, DNC. Yeah. DNC, huh. uh, News Nation. I don't, I don't even know what it's called now. It, bottom line is everyone fell for it because of all the all the heavy advertising our government uh, may, uh, did. With all the networks out there, they gave them all, they gave everyone money and they all yeah, took yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they did. But, all, but also, we, Michael, um, what I just described to you in brief, yeah. If people had been educated about the processes that actually where viruses come from and what they really are and how it how to prevent them from uh, negatively affecting our health, yeah, uh, nobody would have gone along with that because they just look at them and say, well, God, you obviously know nothing about science. Luckily, both my parents have um, not been jabbed. Mm. Thank goodness. Yeah, that is wonderful. 
I, I wish more people had got to, but okay, again, uh, just because they say they're going to micro, and they're, they're going to offer microwaving. The other thing I saw today is they say that uh, they're going to, instead of using needles now, they're going to use ultrasound Ooh. to inject. Oh, and where, where did I see that before? Oh, yeah, Star Trek. Remember when they would go that psh, Oh, well, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That was that was all the device on Star Trek. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, it separates the. It's a cell separator. Uh, but anyway, the bottom line is this. Um, as I mentioned, their the resonance is something that we can control uh, by, uh, in large part, by our emotions. But you know, our thoughts and our deeds is something that we have control over. And it's. I know it's sounds way too simple but things like being calm in the midst of a crisis being kind when other people are being cruel being courageous when others are cowardly and and being creative when others are destructive those are just examples of the difference between the dissonance and resonance uh obviously machines like rife you know that's that's an amazing thing but what are you going to do you're going to carry, carry it around with you like or you know, hook yourself up to a machine every night to 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 get rid of all the the bad frequencies. It's it's an entire process. Uh, just like you know, you want it, it, the common sense things. You eat right, do exercise, um, get enough sleep. Just some basic things, but meditation, prayer, whatever you want to call it. Anything that's going to increase your resonance, it it, it will help increase your health and happiness. I think the only thing close. I'm sorry to to Go ahead. interrupt you but i think the only thing close you could probably take with you are those small like red light red light of things you could uh use for red light mm. therapy by the way yeah that's one of them it's There's like also low level ways. low level wavelengths basic, basically yeah 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 yeah, mm -hmm. yeah but uh, okay but that's uh, and then what if you get into a situation is that's not going to stop you from having road rage not at all but realistically <laughs> you can't really also th this device you really can't carry it around with you mobily but you know, uh, home. There's some that know. I have some that are. I are took mobile, it with really? Me. Yeah. Okay. It, yeah. It allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. That's why I'm like, is it a real sort of red light that would oh reduce God. inflammation and blah blah blah? Yeah. Now the scalar wave mm -hmm. is a real thing. It's it's spiraling in and out at the same time with a like a a void in the middle, and it that's very powerful. Very, very powerful. But again, uh, it can be abused. And the, here's the thing. So so yeah. resonant resonant waves are sympathetic to each other. They amplify each other. They synchronize with each other. It's In music, it's called harmony. <laughs> the opposite is discord, where the, the, the waves literally cancel each other out. And uh, sounds bad, feels bad, it is bad. So that's one of the things we need to be con concerned about and aware of at all times is we're in control of that to a large measure even though we're being bombarded with all this bullshit excuse me but it <laughs> it's it's something that we do not have to accept and we can take um counteractive measures uh i think you kind of have to in order to just just to get along here because here's the thing if they break you down enough you you know you're more vulnerable once you're in a position where like, oh, we're going to, you got, we're going to take away your job. Mm. <laughs> you know, we're going to, we're going to harm you if you right. don't let us harm you. We're going to harm you anyway. In other ways, well, then you're just a freaking criminal. Right, right. Oh, here's the book. I Sorry, it was right in front of me. Oh. The Cancer cancer Cure That Worked, 50 Years of Suppression. I'll toss it in there with the book Angelology just so nice. you can take a peek okay. at that. Um, anybody who wants to contact me, I suggest you write to my email address at Unicus Editor at uh, oh sorry, I've got two. Yes, Unicus Editor at gmail dot com. And if you have any questions, uh be more than happy to help you because sometimes those, I go over a lot of material very quickly and some of the links are hard to find. And um more than happy to help people that sincerely need help. <laughs> um very nice yeah and that's yeah. robert stanley dot substack dot com thanks yeah that's one of the places unicus magazine dot com is back up i'm still working on that and um we'll see how far we can take this very nice yes. going going forward but anyway i do want to wish you a merry christmas i know that's politically incorrect but um 
wish everybody happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Kwanzaa, you name it, and uh, and a happy New Year. Absolutely, right back at you, um, Robert. Thanks. I hope I hope you have a, a swell Christmas. I wish your family and uh, friends very well. Thanks. Oh, and yes. a sacred solstice to those to the Wiccans. Oh yes, much love to all the people <laughs> out there that will be Almost celebrating uh, Christmas, especially those that will be celebrating alone on christmas without oh, any friends it. or family i know you're out there and uh, one day the sun will shine on you i'm, I'm certain about that so robert yeah. once again thank you so yeah. much my friend my and pleasure we'll, thank you we'll do it again soon my friend all right michael take care and there he goes boys and girls that was the one and only mr robert stanley and i hope you enjoyed that one as much as i did it's been a honor and pleasure to do this program with you boys and girls if you want bonus material please go to patreon.com forward slash michael deacon or on youtube it's rather easy and please go to michaeldeacon.com for the merchandise christmas might be over but you can still get a gift for yourself Boys and girls, always a honor and pleasure to do the program for you. I hope I entertained you as well as Robert. Special thank you to Robert Stanley for being a part of the program as always. And of course, special thanks to all of you out there listening at home. And that concludes tonight's program. Thank you so much for being here, boys and girls. We'll do it again on the other side. And with that said, the world is a mysterious place. And life itself is a mystery. Until next time, good night. Just to lay back down and say I won't be coming back Let's call it a heart attack Give me some of that knack This is just a final payback They all flipped on me Took my passions, left me be When I had a place to sit A goddamn attitude to fit all kills smooth me with a spit But things have changed and I have quit Got nothing to look forward to But a backlash full of lies You're too late for where you're going This is faith, the whistle's blowing It's much too late It's all too late You're, you're much, much too late, late. Like a piss hole punk with It's all your own Tell me, tell me what it's like To be alone And let's not forget The skull is prick Who offers fix to your face He dropped out of the subhuman race And he said Boo-hoo Shoot.